welcome back to another Primal Pursuit adventure. In this episode, I'm heading far offshore on New Zealand's coastline to some incredible volcanic islands, jutting out of deep blue water. I'm met with incredible conditions, flat seas, calm, clear, blue water, incredible island scenery. Stay around to watch me spearfishing and gathering my own food, followed by a catch and cook and camping on my boat overnight. Two days of awesome action. You're going to love this one. Let's get into it. G'day everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Ollie. We're going spearfishing and boat camping today. A group of volcanic islands off the coast of New Zealand. Pristine waters, um, always lots of fish life. Uh, very, very cool place to dive. So the boat's fully packed up. I've got all the kit to stay overnight on the boat. Water, food, um, well, condiments mostly. The aim is to spare my own dinner or catch my own dinner in the way of uh, a few crayfish, lobster. I'm making it a bit more difficult for myself today. I've got a new pole spear which I'm gonna limit myself to only using. Um, unless I'm desperate, I do have my spear gun. Yeah, I've been looking to get into pole spearing um, just to add a bit more challenge to my diving. And uh, funnily enough, I was just having a look on the web and got contacted from Giprong over in Hawaii. And uh, the boys over there sure know how to use their pole spears and build them. So um, I've got them to make me a custom one here I'll show you it's all in bits at the moment but um, yeah full carbon fiber beautiful pole spear ski prong and uh, I've got my logo all etched in there yeah that's all pieces together all using top quality stainless components I've got a couple of heads on there I've got a flopper which I'll probably use today in case I see a good snapper or something um, I've even got the slip tip set up so this will be used targeting kingfish in the summer months but yeah today i'll probably use the prong and get some practice in on some smaller fish really excited to get into that look at the water it's blue as very clean I make my first dive down, pole spear in hand, sinking down towards the crack. It's not long before I notice a nice crayfish sitting in this section of the crack on the rock face. So I surface, preparing my breath hold, getting ready to dive down and hopefully get a grab on this nice red rock lobster, otherwise known as crayfish in New Zealand. I don't muck around, I'm quick and going for the grab, a quick tussle but I've got a good grip on the horns of the crayfish and I have landed my first gathering for the day, awesome. Alright. With a crayfish on board, I'm eager to get my first fish on my new pole spear. Sandagas Ras cruises in front, not a target species for me. And then I spot some more likely crayfish terrain. Nice big boulders with crack and kelp for cover. And sure enough, there's a nice crayfish down in this crack. going for another hasty grab but this crayfish is hanging on for dear life digging its claws into the rock 
and I just cannot free the crayfish. Running out of breath, I make my way back to the surface and this crayfish backs deep into his cave and lives another day. With not many fish showing up, I decide to continue hunting this bouldery terrain as it's very, very ideal for crayfish. I sink down to the sea floor and this cave opens up underneath this large, large boulder. I'm making my way through, letting my eyes adjust to the darkness and then I spot a whole bunch of crayfish up here, all a bit small, and just relax, look around, and then sure enough I spot a few more crayfish, this time they're bigger, and I go in for the grab once again. This is a nice crayfish. Back and forth tussle and I manage to break the crayfish free from the rock, and I've got another beautiful crayfish. That was a battle out of breath. The place was loaded with crayfish, every crack and crevice, and I decided to take one last crayfish home, tasty wee critters, and grab this one, tucked in here in between these rocks. With enough crayfish, it was time to get back on the pole spear and target some fish for dinner. Good first dive, uh, not much practice with the pole spear. Missed a couple, managed to get this leather jacket. Nothing really exciting, but hey, leather jackets are actually very, very tasty. I've, uh, I've eaten a couple in my time, and um, as they're just such an easy fish, I could have almost grabbed that one with my hand before it started to swim off. Um, a lot of people just don't target them because we like a challenge, spear fishing. That's why we mostly hunt snapper here in New Zealand and whatnot. But yeah, nothing wrong with leather jackets. So if I get another another one of those, that's going to be um, dinner. No, not an issue. But don't really need to worry about dinner because here we go. Got three nice crayfish in there in the live bait tank, and um, see, put a bit more water in there actually. Yeah. So look at that. That's quite a nice one. He's uh, not too happy in there. We've got dinner, but the main goal of today is to get uh, get a few fish on this pole spear. I did lose one fish on the three prong, so I think I'll definitely put the uh, flopper barb on and might even connect a float line uh, to a buoy just in case. Just in case I do see a kingfish because um, I won't hesitate to take the shot. So, gonna pick up the anchor and move spots, and we'll see what else we can find in the. Uh, the ocean out here, magnificent uh, conditions, it's awesome. Well guys, I've just had to stop. I'm just boosting in between islands. And out here, you can see just above my hand here, there's a massive dark patch. 
there's probably a patch of fish on the surface. Got to be about 100 meters across, 10, 20 meters wide, just bait fish on the surface. So I'm expecting to see trevally or kahawai, maybe both, and who knows what's underneath. Um, the water's still 19 degrees, even though we're nearing um, the first day of winter, so there could be some kingies still around. I'm sticking to my plan. I'm going to keep to the pole spear only, but I've added another section in the middle, so I've got some more length, and I've put the flopper head on, and uh, I've tied a bungee to the bow. It comes around here, bowline tied to the rubber. I haven't got my breakaway set up, <laughs> sorted yet, so yeah. If I do shoot something big, it's going to be connected to the boat. I'm just going to drive in really slowly, quietly, and just peel off like you do on work up. Grab a tip off before I forget. That won't be very helpful. Look at it all. All concentrated right there. Big patch out here. This is all fish. Jumping in and the scenes are incredible. Thousands and thousands of bait fish. Below, no kingy scene, no other types of fish. So I load up and try and get a shot into one of these fish, which look to be mackerel. First shot, a clean miss, and then I load up again, this time getting a nice shot. Sending the pole spear into this fish, hitting the spine and immobilizing the fish. Alright, mackerel. Wow, I'm pretty sure this is like a blue mackerel, blue mackerel or slimy mackerel. Um, I don't think they're too good eating, but that's pretty cool. First one on the pole spear. Well, finally jumped in on the school, managed to finally get in close enough without spooking them. Unfortunately, no trevally or kahawai or kingies, just um, these mackerel of some sort. Here it is here. Managed to shoot one and um, very cool looking things. Look at the patterns on this fish and the colours. Um, if that's showing in the light, but it's um, wicked, man. Look at the pattern on it. Beautiful fish and they are very slimy. So. I, I'm pretty sure these are called a slimy mac. I might be wrong. I'll find out later on. They are very slimy. I've actually shot one on the spear gun not too far from here, but not on the pole spear, so pretty cool to tick off. I'll keep it, put it on ice, and uh, get on the phone later. And if it's eatable, we'll eat it. If not, yeah, we'll use it as a bait to uh, bring in a snapper. People often say, don't shoot a fish or don't, keep, don't take a fish home if you uh, don't know what it is. But yeah, I agree. But. Um, in this case, there's literally thousands of them, so I think uh, one fish for research purposes is fine. All right, I've moved spots, and um, that's all you can do when spearfishing slow. Just keep moving. Got a rocky outcrop here, and there's a whole lot more bait on the surface, so we'll do the same tactic. Tie off to the boat, jump overboard, and fingers crossed this time, um, something a bit more tasty than that slimy mackerel. Let's get in. The water column was absolutely filled with these blue mau mau. Finally a good chance to get some practice in with the pole spear and I get straight into the action sending it through this nice big blue mau mau. A very good eating fish. Alright. Nice <laughs> blue mau mau. Tasty. Awesome. Hardly a challenge but uh... <laughs> shooting fish in the barrel but Hey, that's cool. Stoked.
All right, butterfish. Whew. Well, had a um, pretty steady day. A bit hard going on the fish front, but um, I'm not complaining. We've got three or four fish and um, three crayfish in the tank here. So yeah, all successful. We've got dinner. So I'm just searching for a nice little sheltered bay for the night. I'll double check the wind if I've got any cell phone reception. I don't think I will. And uh, yeah. Whack the anchor in, get warm, and uh, let's get cooking. I'm gonna do a few uh, fish, seafood meals, and uh, have a nice cook up, so stay around. Nice and warm and um, anchored up. Jeez, that sun's bright. In um, just an awesome, awesome spot. Not a soul in sight, no boats, and uh, wind's dropping right off. It's just going to be a glass over. It basically is already, and uh, very, very calm. Still a beautiful night, so feeling pretty good. I'll show you my catch. Here's my fish, and uh, Two nice blue Mau Mau, actually quite good sized Mau Mau. Two leather jackets, um, far from big, but we'll make them into a feed. And I got the one butterfish. And so yeah, pretty cool. Down below, as you saw earlier, we'll just uh, check on the craze. Still got my bugs in there, so yeah, got quite a selection for dinner. I think I'm gonna do butterfish and leather jacket fish burgers. Long time since I've had one of these so yeah we'll process those and uh, crumb them up and it is burger time. Don't think uh, I'm that hungry to have some crayfish as well so either breakfast or we'll take those home tomorrow. Let's get into it. Get out another bait board installed on the side. The railblazer mounts. That just clicks in. Back on ice. So the last time I had a leather jacket was years ago. Some of you might remember me hacking one up with my knife and just absolutely blunting it. They're called a leather jacket for a reason. Like that is the most grippiest, tough, leathery skin. But I've seen a few videos since and apparently they're very easy to process. So it's gonna like make an incision there, get rid of that head and then we should be able to just peel that whole skin off. So we'll give it a go. Now if we right, let's this head, make an incision that. under there. Try and get rid of this spike. Apparently, super tough, unreal. We can just grab the skin. And the videos are true, look at this. It just peels off. Well, that was way easier there we go and um, it's got this really nice white sweet flesh I remember it tastes awesome good eating um, they're just not big fish so you don't get a hell of a lot off them but no complaints oh look at that 
skinned leather jacket. I still want to fill at them because I'm going to make burgers, so we'll just come in as normal as we would with any fish along that backbone. I see a lot of people frying them whole, but I want to do burgers. I'm going to crumb these. Same technique over the rib bones. There really isn't much on these, but it'd be enough for a burger. I mean, that's, that's basically it. But two of those, that'll be enough for one burger. And down the middle, some pin bones, the spine. Get those out. Oh, there we go. That'll come up all right. Tasty. Okay, here's our fillets off the uh, leather jackets, and there's not a lot, but um, it's actually plenty. Once I've got a bit of crumb on there, I mean, that's that's going to be a lot of fish for one burger, so that's heaps. I'm a hungry bugger. I'm going to eat at least two burgers, probably three, so we'll cut up half of the butterfish, take one fillet off there, and that's going to be enough for a couple of burgers. Down the spine. Now, if you're unaware, the humble butterfish, it's a vegetarian fish, they eat kelp, and uh, although there have been rare occasions where they're caught online by rod fishermen, um, generally speaking, they're just only targeted by spear fishermen, as yeah, you just you just can't target them on the rod and reel. Seems to be quite a lucky day if you do get one uh, on a hook and bait. Beautiful fish, um, very nutritious, and um, I find them some of the best fish you can have crumbed it's just absolutely beautiful nice white soft flaky flesh definitely crumbed up one of my favorites a bit bland by itself um, but get creative fish curries awesome yeah great eating bit of a hack job all right you can see why they also call them the green bone literally has a greeny bluey tinge to its uh, center spine. Normal fillet, using the knife, pulling the skin, bit of a wiggle, there we go, nothing on there. Butterfish fillet, and I'm just going to basically in half. So here we have our fish for dinner. Plenty. Okay, we're going to chuck all our fish fillets into a container here. Going to use some mayonnaise as a binder. It's probably way too much. Give that a good mix. I'm a big fan of just using mayonnaise as a binder for crumb. I find um, doing the whole egg and flour mix, it just gets so gluggy, you lose a lot of flavour. It's just a lot more um, mild and yeah, it works well. And it seeps through into the crumb and really goldens up nicely. It's lemon and herb crumb. It smells pretty good. Mix all that together. Nice crumb fish ready. You know the drill. Lots of butter. Let's get down nice fish in here, a bit of butterfish, a bit more butterfish, and our leather jacket. Load it up, a right, few fresh ingredients, a bit of tomato, a few spring onions, a bit of flavour. Man, this is just a beautiful evening. Not a bad spot to perch up and have dinner at all. Just because we're in the tail end of summer coming into winter, everybody uh, decides it's too cold and whatnot to get out on the water, but I mean, look at it, it's absolutely mint. I'm still in a t-shirt, warm for now, I'm sure once that sun drops it's going to get cold, but um, come on guys, get out there, get into it.
bit of lettuce, a bit of rabbit food. It does taste good on a burger. It's heaps. Fish is done. Beautiful. Let's get these buns together. A bit of mayonnaise, of course. Cheese. Tomato. Now, let's try and make sure we can differentiate. That is definitely leather jacket, butterfish. This one can be a mixture. Sprinkle of spring onion. Or lettuce. There we have it. Fresh burgers. Squeeze of fresh lemon juice. There we have it, freshly caught fish burgers. Taste test. Better start with the leather jacket, I think. Oh, look at that. Not bad, not bad. It's really a nice fish. Quite sweet. Beautiful flesh. Happy with that, happy with that. There we go, leather jackets. We're so fussy here in New Zealand, I am as well, and um, it's good to make myself work for it for a change, get the pole spare and um, yeah, shoot and eat fish that I normally wouldn't because there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. Time. I'm a bit of a sucker for the butterfish though, slightly biased so Ooh, that is good. Well this is me for a well. while, chill, enjoy the fruits of my labour and look at the view, stunning. Got it so good here in New Zealand, so good. Got to make the most of it. Mm. Righto, seats removed, easy as that, big floor space, get my mattress down and we'll get this tent erected because as soon as that sun goes down it's going to be freezing, time to get nice and dry, warm, cosy and uh, Fingers crossed there's no mosquitoes here. I've camped out here once before but on another island here and um, I don't have any issues but never know, I've got my mosquito net if all hell breaks loose. Right, I've decided to get a bit more luxurious this time. Got a big double blow up mattress. Got my pump, just a little cheapy. But the main piece of the puzzle, hiding under here, is my EcoFlow unit. These power stations are just so, so useful. I use this for everything. It's just incredible. So what we do is plug it in. It's got the input there. Press go. Won't take long. Beats blowing it up with a pump or anything, hand pump. That's going quite fast. Oh, do. Ah, oh, that wasn't too smart. Well, there we go, double bed. Plenty of room in this boat, it's incredible. And there's room to spare on the sides as well. There we go. 
How's that? Plenty of space. Got the uh, sleeping bag. Warm as. Stretch out. Have a good sleep. There's no need to rough it too much. Pretty much glamping. Another boat just pulled in here. Got company. Bed set, tent set up, sun is just peeking down over the horizon, absolute magic. Just got the back rolled up on the tent here, that just, that just rolls up, clicks in and uh, when I'm ready later, just rolls down and onto the cleats in the corners, zips down, fully enclosed, pretty cool. Well, another good day out on the water underwater on the boat and um, always good topped off by camping on the boat it's just something else you guys if you haven't tried it just get out on your boats and um, chuck a little tarp up like I used to you don't need much or just a sleeping bag and um, in summer it's not too bad you get a bit of dew a little bit wet it's not the end of the world and to be able to just chill here at the end of the day slowly rocking yourself to sleep it's absolutely awesome and you get to encounter these beautiful sunsets like this look at the sky beautiful pink so cool and the best thing about it you wake up in the morning and you're out at some insane island ready to dive first thing you don't need to travel to the boat ramp and da 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 you just chuck your wetsuit on jump in the water and you're into it. As I've mentioned lots of times, first light, first hour in the morning is just the best spearfishing in my opinion. And right now, but um, I'm full of food and, and buggered. So <laughs> we'll see what happens tomorrow, guys. Definitely gonna get back in the water. Um, the conditions are mint. I'm gonna stick to the pole spear. <sighs> Even though I've seen those big kingies today, if I had my spear gun, I would have I would have been in range to shoot it, but um, it's all cool. I'm enjoying this challenge of the pole spear. It's bloody hard, I tell you. Everything, all your whole diving, everything's just totally changed. I feel like a complete rookie again. It's quite good. I'm enjoying it. Enjoying the challenge. So, other than that, I'm signing off. Now I'm just going to enjoy the sunset and unwind. And uh, I'll see you in the morning. Well, I made it through the night, pretty good sleep, no mosquitoes, and we've got a beautiful sunrise.
What a morning. Beautiful. Yes, that is a banana on board. Benefits of going out by yourself. Bring what you want. I've always generally got a couple of bananas and I usually do pretty well, so. Coffee and a banana and we are into it. Worst part about the whole trip, getting back into a cold wetsuit in the morning. Whew. Let's do this. No one likes a complainer, so we'll just get into it. It's hard enough. Let's do this. So I'm gonna use the pole spear again. Stick to the flopper. For what we're targeting, just gonna do the two piece. Just tie this together. Beautiful grips, all stainless and Titanium components, really nice pole spear. Let's see what we can get. Snapper on the pole spear. Very happy with that. Woohoo! Very happy. The hunt continued with the pole spear getting some practice in. I peeked over the sledge once more, but no sign of any more snapper and the whole reef system was just full of demoiselle and wrasse nothing else much going on I decide to swim out kick further out towards the channel towards some current hoping this will bring some more fish species and it does just that this reef covered in butterfish so I wait for a big fish to show and get a nice shot here right through the spine of this fish. Oh guys just got out of the water pretty quiet um, but yeah that first spot I smashed up a few kinner and um, that's where I had the most action. A couple of good snapper were coming in there was one big one, good good sized snapper and he could see me in the distance and I could see him and just couldn't get him to come in on the, on the, on the kinna belly, he was just being very wary. But uh, managed to peg this snapper. I'm really chuffed, 
first snapper on a hand spear, hole spear, and um, yeah, nothing to complain about there. Nice, nice snapper. So it was a uh, good feeling. It was almost like getting my first ever snapper on the spear gun. Not as good, but um, not far off to be honest. So I'm really enjoying this pole spear. Nice challenge. Shot him top down actually. Can't believe I got the shot. He just wouldn't turn broadside. So I took a top down shot and it, um, there's the hole on the top of the head here and it just went straight through as you saw in the video. Thought I'd take one more butter fish, take that home. Yes, a couple of fish for the morning. All right, let's carry on. All right, let's go find some more fish. Coffee time and uh, having a real coffee. Getting a bit sick of these little instant powder coffees. My Riley coffee, good stuff. That is some goodness. Got the little bush buck plunger that just goes into the jet ball, and um, yeah, there you go. You can have plunger coffee. Easy as that. Pretty good. Oh yeah, that's good. I know I'm often drinking coffee out on my dives and I'll say it once again, it's the worst thing to be doing because it increases your heart rate. It does not help your dives at all. Your dive time is greatly reduced, but um, I just love coffee and I've got a pretty fast metabolism myself. So after about half an hour of diving, it's basically back to normal anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Woo! I'm, I'm pumped. <laughs> Good coffee. Time to cook up. Blue Mau Mau fish burgers. Fish blood just going everywhere. Um, very underrated fish, the Blue Mau Mau. All these smaller fish, which um, I kind of got yesterday. Butterfish, Blue Mau Mau. Um, there's little reef species like pigfish, goatfish, you name it. They're all excellent eating fish and people just overlook them because they're smaller, easier to get, catch or spare. For you out there that watching videos like mine or other people, um, people shooting big snapper and big kingies and stuff, um, don't get put off. It's all good eating fish out there. Getting the biggest fish doesn't matter. It's a fun challenge for me, but apart from that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just spearing and catching smaller, easy to get fish. So get in there, get stuck in. Don't think you have to go get this the biggest trophy fish um, for it to be a successful mission. Just getting out, being on the ocean, underwater, all that stuff, you're already winning because you're out of out of the house, off the couch, away from the television with all that crap that uh, gets funneled through there. So yep, just get out of nature. Get yourself a feed, it's a uh, cool process and it feels so good just being able to catch your own food, process it and then eat it. Always tastes better, so there we go. Love the design of this bait board at the back for washing off. Just spin it around and everything goes off the back there. Too easy. Four pieces, two burgers, and that is done. Look at this. Beautiful. Blue Mau Mau. Doesn't look too easy to eat. It's so soft. 
There we go, yum. Mm. So here's this um, slimy mackerel or blue mackerel, I believe they're also called an Aussie, maybe, um, that I shot yesterday. I shot one before years ago and um, I got told it's um, nasty, use it as bait, chuck it away, no good eating. But I've done some Googling um, overnight and apparently there's nothing wrong with them. Quite good eating, in fact, as long as they're iced properly, bled and cared for. Apparently smoked, delicious, as they are an oily fish, and generally oily fish uh, smokes the best. That's why a lot of these deep sea fish are just exquisite smoked. Certain species around New Zealand, the mullet, absolutely one of my favorites smoked. But I'm beginning to realize that all these tales of certain fish species that uh, they are no good for eating, use them as bait, it's all all bollocks. Some of these species of tuna, such as skippies, albacore, fishermen for decades have said, oh, they're crap, throw them away. But I think all this stems from decades ago when fishermen didn't really understand the importance of bleeding fish, and then secondly, icing fish well, getting them on a slurry, cooled down straight away. I, I don't think there's many fish out there that are actually bad eating. As long as you've bled the fish, iced it, and uh, learned how to cook it properly, I think pretty much everything out there is um, tasty and edible. So don't get put off by people who say that's um, no good and use that for bait and stuff. Do your own research. As with everything these days, you can't believe a word anyone says, just um, kind of figure it out for yourself. There we go, slimy mackerel or blue mackerel. I'm gonna take that home, it's chilled down beautifully, it was bled, and um, I think I'm gonna smoke that up when I get home. Alright guys, out of the water, man I gave it a good nudge today, I really, really tried uh, all over the place, all my hot spots for kingies, saw quite a few at that last spot, um, but all quite juvenile um, in size, just not quite big enough, and um, yeah, I don't think I would have got a shot off anyways, they were um, being a bit, bit wary and I just, and just to close that gap with a pole spear is quite challenging I'm finding. So lots to learn and improve. And um, it might be a while before I get a king if I'm coming into these winter months. They are a bit more scarce, but 
it's good it's a good challenge so i'm going to keep trying for a kenny on the pole spear all good um i've got a couple of fish today at home a couple of craze um my mind feels refreshed body feels refreshed it's good to get out and get some good exercise so no complaints whatsoever so hopefully a couple of you out there are inspired to get into it yourself or get back into it and um, that's pretty much it for this mission hope you enjoyed coming along with the ride as usual it's um, just a completely different world underwater um, I love love showing what we've got in New Zealand to uh, New Zealanders who have no idea and uh, people around the world we've got a good here so thanks for watching I'll see you on the next adventure um, links down below to support the channel website all that stuff um, if you want to buy some merch and whatnot leave a comment hit subscribe if you want to see more or just want to support the channel it's the best way um, to support me hit that subscribe button and um, other than that see you next time cheers guys well back oh, back home guys and uh, smoked up that mackerel and there is absolutely nothing wrong with it it's beautiful just did a normal brine just cooked up in the Weber on a few coals sort of smoking away there and um, <laughs> Hot smoke for about an hour and a half, two hours, and um, slowly. It's beautiful, nothing wrong with that. There you go, slimy mackerel.